pretty um, hot topic tonight. We're going to be talking about herpes, um, which I know some people might not necessarily want to know about it, but it's a very important subject. So it's 8 o'clock. We're going to give a start. And hello, everyone. Lori from Women's Health on the Go, where I provide telemedicine for women who can either get to their gynecologist or might not have insurance, and it's really hard for them to get to a gynecologist. I provide telemedicine, which is a medical appointment via video stream. Um, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, make sure that you do. I mean, you get a great free pamphlet on um, women's health um, on the go slash subscribe. Um, tonight, we are going to be talking about herpes. Now, um, some of you may shy away at this, but to me, this is a really important subject because of the fact that when someone is diagnosed with this, um, they have lots and lots of questions and they get really upset, rightfully so. And I'm hoping that I've got a whole bunch of questions that um, people have asked and I'm going to try to get through all of them try to get through all of them and I hope that I don't miss anything. Um, I did want to touch about on something from last week um, because sometimes when you're doing these live feeds you know in your head you have all this information that you want to make sure that I give you and then after the show I go oh my gosh I forgot to mention that. So um, one of the things that we were talking about last week was about um, sexual desire and things that we can do um, to help you know increase our sexual desire and I forgot to mention um, two books that I wanted to mention um, one is because um, I definitely think that one of the things I was talking about is exploring ourselves um, and making sure we know our anatomy and everything and even for our partners too and there's these two great books um, one is called she comes first which is the thinking guides man for pleasing a woman and then there's also Passionista, which is the Empowering Woman's Guide to Pleasuring a Man. I think that these are really great books because they actually go into the anatomy and what actually happens through the sexual um, response um, through the body. So I'm going to put these on the bottom in the comment section if you want to um, look further into them. If you have any questions about them, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I would be more than happy to um, provide any more information. But I wanted to mention that because I did forget about last week. And I do think that those are really good books. So, okay, let's talk about herpes. What is herpes? Um, herpes is a virus. Um, it's a virus that we get from having sexual relations with someone who has a virus. It's a, what we call the old term STD, sexually transmitted disease, but it now has evolved into a sexually transmitted infection. We call them STIs now. Um, and it's very easy to get in the essence that it's just, you get it from having skin to skin contact with somebody who has the virus. There are different types. When it comes to the herpes virus, there are several strains of it. I'm only gonna be talking tonight about two of the strains. One is herpes virus type 1, which is oral herpes, better known as oral herpes, and a lot of people know them as fever blisters or cold sores, which we can get type 1 genitally. And then we're going to talk about type 2, which is um, the herpes that's just that's generally known as the genital um, version. Um, and most of these we get from sexual relations, from having uh, sex with someone who has the virus. Now, type 1 is very common. Um, the statistics are coming down a little bit more. Um, a lot of the times, most people have the, herp, the oral type herpes, and they get it when they're a child um, because grandma has a cold sore, and she doesn't know, and she just loves her little grandkid, and she's hugging and kissing, and that's typically how most people get type 1. Now that we're becoming more aware of what type 1 is and how it's transmitted, well, you know, it's less likely that that's kind of happening, um, but it is very common. Um, typically, um, type 2 is something that we get from having sexual relations with somebody who has the virus. Now, um, getting tested for it. Um, I'm gonna, I have so many questions, hopefully I'm gonna get through all of them, um, and hopefully I'm not gonna miss anything, but getting tested is actually, um, the CDC, when you 
we as providers go through, you know, there's research and what should be screened and what should not be screened. And the CDC, which is the Center of um, Disease Control, they actually don't recommend routine screening for genital herpes, which I think, it's, I struggle with that. It's not that I get what they're trying to say um, because it's the prevalence of it and it doesn't cause necessarily long-term sequelae. Um, but I think that everyone should have the right to know that they can be tested and if they want to be tested. And this is the reason why I think that. And whenever somebody comes to me and they want STD testing, I always go through everything and I also say you can be tested for herpes. A lot of providers, when people go for um, testing, um, because the CD doesn't recommend it, they don't mention it and they don't do it. And the reason why I think that we should at least know that you should be telling your patients about it is because I cannot begin to tell you how many stories people have come to me, they have their first outbreak, and they go, well, he told me he got tested and he was, you know, he had all his STD testing and it was negative. That is a very, very common scenario. Um, so I always make sure that I tell all of my patients that, that I can test them for that and whether they want to be tested for it um, is completely up to them. Um, so that's about testing it. I think if you really want to get tested for the herpes virus after this conversation, um, when you do go to your provider and they ask, you know, if you want to get STD testing, that you actually ask for the testing. Um, how is herpes transmitted? I guess I told you that it's skin to skin contact. Um, and just because type one is orally, you can get oral herpes genitally and genital her herpes orally. And you do not need to have an actual outbreak in order for you to get the herpes virus. There is such a thing called um, silent shedding. Silent, silent shedding basically means that I might not have any symptoms at all and I have sex with somebody, but I, my body can be expressing the virus through my skin and when I have sex with someone and my body is rubbing against that other person, that they can get the virus. It is, um, the statistics show that 70% of the time when people transmit herpes to another person, they were silently shedding the virus, that there was no symptoms. So um, that's really important to know that you do not, if you have the herpes virus, you can transmit the virus even though you're not having any symptoms. And when you think of the different types, so herpes type 2, generally, 15 to 30 percent of the time when you will be, of, you know, of your life, you'll be shedding the virus to that person. When is it? I don't know. When does that actually occur? I don't really know. It's really hard to say. It's not like there's a certain time of the month that you will be necessarily um, shedding the virus. Um, but you can shed the virus at any time. Um, okay, let me try to get back because I know I get all over the place. When I talk about herpes, I get all over the place um, because there's just so much information. I am not going to be definitely able to cover all of the um, information which is perfectly fine, um, but um, there's just so much information. Okay, um, one question um, that sometimes I have is that, so someone comes in with a lesion and it, it just classically looks like herpes. Um, but typically what I do is I do what we call a viral culture, so it's a culture of the actual lesion, and then we also do blood work. Now, depending on if I, have, if I have herpes and I have my first outbreak and it happens today and I get into the doctor's office today and I get the culture, I'm more likely that it's gonna come out positive. But as that lesion starts to heal, the, the what's, what's the word? The chances of it, as it heals, you're not really you know, shedding the virus from that lesion as much. So sometimes when people come in like, five days after the lesion came out, we do a culture, it's still herpes, but the virus comes out negative. I hope that makes kind of sense. So typically what I do is I do, one, the viral culture, because sometimes we can actually say that yes, you know, it's herpes today. But then I also do blood work. What is the blood work gonna tell me? 
one of the things that a lot of people want to know is when they get diagnosed with herpes is when did I get it? Who did I get it from? Well, I can never tell that, unfortunately, unless someone has had previous tests and then all of a sudden they come in and now they have it and they're with this one person. That's kind of the only situation where that will kind of happen. So I do the viral culture and I do the blood work. The blood work, when we get exposed to viruses, everything has what we call incubation periods, right? So I get exposed to something today, but it's gonna take my body, when it comes to herpes, three months for my body to develop antibodies for them to be detected in my blood. So if a patient comes in, has a negative culture, and they have negative blood work, I tell them to come in in three months, because again, if, remember, it's gonna take three months for it, you know, it to actually convert in the blood, and then usually in the three month time, their blood will come out positive, and therefore I can tell them that they had a recent outbreak. If you have initial outbreak, and you have positive blood, what I can tell you is, is that you've had the virus for more than three months. That's all I can tell you. I cannot tell you that it was four months. I can't tell you if it was two years, five years. I can't tell you. Unfortunately, when it comes to the virus, unless you've been screened, like I said before, once, unless you've been screened multiple times and we kind of have a window frame of exactly who and when at that time frame, there's really no way to tell you how long you've had the virus. Um, I can tell you that most of the time, whoever you're with, if they have herpes, most of the time if you're going to get it, it's gonna be within the first three months of you being with that person. That's what um, statistics, excuse me, statistics and research show, that typically it takes about, um, typically in relationships, if you're going to get the virus, you're going to get that virus within the first three months of being with someone. Um, okay, can I get the herpes um, in different parts of my body? Okay, now, once you have been exposed to the virus, it's hopefully I can explain this good because sometimes um, it's hard to explain this stuff. Okay, I got oral herpes, okay, and I had my cold sore and I never got it anywhere else and it's years later. I'm not gonna develop cold sores or herpes on uh, any other part of my body at that point. It's very unlikely that you're gonna transmit it. Like sometimes people are like, when they you know um, have a lesion, you know, like making sure they wash their hands, they don't touch anything because they don't wanna spread it on themselves. You're not really going to be spreading it on yourself. The only time I can get, tell you a story. I had a patient, I was working um, in a clinic in New York City and I actually used to do um, a STD clinic on Saturdays. And I had um, a male, it was a male at that point. And he went out to California to see an old high school friend and they decided to have a wonderful weekend, if you know what I mean, wink, wink. Um, and he came in and he had these um, lesions on his private parts, and um, it pretty much looked like herpes. He it was a little bit not, sometimes herpes does not look exactly like it does on the internet, like these lesions. He actually had what they would call fissures, they were very kind of lines. So we did some cultures, and I called him a couple days later, and he says, now the lesions are in my mouth. So basically what happened with him was, is that he, had oral sex, he performed oral sex on her, and he had sex with her, so he got exposed to the virus all in one day, so he ended up giving it orally and genitally, okay? So if you get exposed to it all at the same day, then yes, you can have it in different areas of the body, but once you get genital herpes, and if it's only come out on the genital area, you're not five years going to like, you know, if you touch yourself during down, down there during an outbreak and you put your hand on your face, are you necessarily going to transmit it to your face? I hope that makes sense. So you can't necessarily transmit it to other parts of the body, but you can um, uh, get it with that initial um, exposure. 
okay? Um, can herpes be treated? No. Um, once you get the herpes virus, it's a virus that you will have inside your body the rest of your life. Herpes actually lives in the nerve root. So if you think about it, I always just try to tell people that, um, just think of, you know, we have nerves in our whole body, right? If you have a cold sore, right? Your herpes, if you like somewhere, just think of the, the nerve root at the end. Okay, the virus kind of lives there. And as long as you take care of yourself, okay? I kind of, this is like my kind of analogy, I always say, it's like, the gar car is parked in the garage and the garage door is open and it's really locked up. And if your immune system is really good, if your immune system is working really, really good, it's going to keep that garage locked. It's going to keep the virus in the garage and it's not going to come out. You are not going to get an outbreak. But once your immune system goes down, then the garage door can break up, break open, and then you can come out and you know then that's what you get a cold sore. So. Um, it's always in your body, okay? So it can't necessarily be treated. But when you have an outbreak, you can actually take medication to help speed up the healing process of the lesions. Now, typically, your first outbreak ever that you have is the longest outbreak you have. It can last from two to four weeks. And typically, we gotta give you what we call an antiviral medication. Um, most people know it as, um, Valcyclovir or Valtrex, or excuse me, um, Famvir or Acyclovir. Um, those are um, antiviral medications that we give people who have herpes. And typically, your first outbreak, we give it to you for quite some time because that outbreak is so long. But once you've had your first breakout, if you are going to get another outbreak, it's very hard to tell. Like again, I told you about your immune system. If you have a really good, strong immune system, then you can hopefully prevent yourself from getting another outbreak. But sometimes if your immune system's down, you're gonna keep getting them. So um, once you've had that follow-up, then your medication is, you're just taking it for like three days. But then you have the scenario where, you know, your immune system is really, really down and you're getting, sometimes people get an outbreak every month. Sometimes it's every other month. You know, it's frequently happening. And that's when we can give you what we call suppressive therapy. And that's um, medication that you take every day. Um, and it's the antiviral medication. And that will help um, cut down the chances of you getting more outbreaks. It actually cuts it down, I think, to about 90% of the time that you won't get um, outbreaks. So, and suppressive therapy, okay, so let's then, there's just so much information about herpes, it's just amazing. Um, so that is a treatment for frequent outbreaks. Um, then we have, if I'm herpes positive, and now I have a new partner, and he's negative, is there a way that I can prevent the transmission of the virus to that partner? Um, yes. Um, that suppressive therapy that we put people on for frequent outbreaks, we can put on someone who is um, in a relationship that their partner is negative. So what it does, if you take some su suppressive therapy, it'll decrease the transmission um, rate to about 45, 48%. So about half the time it's gonna help reduce that. It's not 100%. Um, People, let's see, the way that the transmission rate basically goes is positive men, 10% of the time, will transmit it to an uninfected female, where a positive female will only transmit it to an uninfected male about 4% of the time. So I don't know if you can see the, the difference there. So it's more likely that a male is going to give the virus to a, um, a female. So, um, yeah, so then that's suppressive therapy. Um, let's see. Um, I answered that question. I have so many questions here about how often will I get outbreaks. Again, that's really, really hard to determine. Um, it, the key is always to make sure that you boost up your immune system. Um, if you boost up your immune system, the likelihood of you getting an outbreak is very unlikely. Um, a natural supplement that some people, this is, 
There is a natural supplement that people do take to help prevent um, outbreaks and to take during um, uh, outbreaks as well. It's got debatable research. Some, some say it works and some say it doesn't, um, but the supplement is lysine um, and a lot of people do take it. I've had a lot of patients take it and it actually does, they do say that it helps. So um, that's a natural remedy that you can kind of do. I think that I've, I think I've said a lot about it. I'm sure that I'm missing something because I know after the show, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot to mention this because um, that's typically what's happening. I know that happened last week and I'm sure that that'll happen this week as well. But that is, hopefully you got some information about herpes um, through this talk. If you have any questions about herpes, please, please post them the book below, private message me, email me. Um, you can go to my website, um, www.womenshealthonthego.com, go to the contact page and reach out to me. And again, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, make sure that you do, you get a really cool free pamphlet once you sign up. And I send out a monthly newsletter with lots of little cool um, health tips. So um, definitely um, sign up for that. And I think that's it for about tonight. I hope that you enjoyed the show. Um, I will be here next Monday. Um, please, too, if you have any subject that you would like for me to talk about, um, please um, comment below. Again, private message me or check out, you know, go to my website and let me know. I'm looking for lots of different tops topics to talk about. Um, I've got uh, I've got some inside my head. I'm not quite sure what we'll end up talking about next week, but please make sure that you um, come back. I'm going to be here every Monday night at 8 p.m. for about a half hour, 20, 20 minutes to a half an hour to talk about topics, to if you have questions, to answer your questions. And um, I hope that I start seeing everybody. Um, thank you again. Um, remember, women's health matters. We matter. We make sure that we take care of ourselves. And I will see you next week. Thank you very much and have a great evening. Bye-bye.